In this video I'm going to look at how you can create a sub menu using TK Inter. Let's start by considering this computer program here and look at the runtime that it gives us. And we can see we have a window that has a menu bar and there are three items on that menu bar. This import TK Inter, here we have three functions. If we look at this one here, we can see that we will be able to change the background color of the window to red. And this function here has a line that will change the background color to green. And this one will have a line of code that will change the background color to blue. This line creates the instance of the window that you see here and this is the name bound to that instance. This line will create the instance of the menu that's associated with the window that's created on this line and we're going to give that menu this name my underscore menu. So my underscore menu is bound to this instance of the menu. Once created we add add labels to the menu and this line for example refers to the menu that was created on this line and we invoke this method and we pass in this which is label is assigned red which makes the label appear here and this is saying if the user was to click onto that label then we are to execute this which is the name of this function. Now this line is also sending a message to this menu which will invoke this method and the label green is then placed here and when the user were to click on that then what we will get executed is defined here and we can see that the command is being made equal to green underscore color and of course green underscore color is referring to this function and of course the function will change the background color of the screen to green. This program statement is also a message to this menu which will invoke this method and on this occasion you can see we're making the label blue and that will appear here and if we look to what we are making the command equal to we're making it equal to blue underscore color which is the name of this function and of course this function will change the background color of the window to blue. So we can see that this line created the window, these four lines created the menu. Now this line is responsible for putting the menu created by these four lines onto this window. Because you can see here we have a message to this window which invokes the config method and we pass to the named argument here my underscore menu which was the menu created here. Consequently you can see the menu structure appears here. And then then of course we enter the main loop waiting for the user of the program to click on either the red, the green or the blue label. Now to all intents and purposes the program we're looking at here is a follow on from the last video because I have yet to introduce submenus. But what I would like to do at this point is to consider the names that I've chosen as the programmer. I've chosen this as my underscore menu because our knowledge to date is this is a menu. What in fact I like to think of this as being is a menu bar. So if we look at all the occasions where I've got my underscore menu here as highlighted now I'm going to change that name to something different and I'm going to show that in the following bit of code. And you can see I've changed it to my underscore menu bar here that I've been highlighted now. So I've effectively changed my underscore menu to my underscore menu bar because that's really what I'm creating here. I'm creating a menu bar that has the labels red, green and blue as you can observe by the runtime. So consider the runtime here and follow the cursor. If I click on the red you can see that the background colour of the window has gone to red because this is the function that executes when I clicked on the red label as defined by this line of code here it added the red label and of course here command equals red underscore color which is saying execute this of course if you follow the cursor again and I click on the green label you can see that this is the function that executed and this line executes and changes the background color to green and of course if I click on the blue then this function executes which changes the background color to Blue. Consider the following runtime. If I come here, if you follow the cursor and click on the red, you can see the background of the window goes to red. Click here, it goes to green, and click here, and it goes to blue. 
So you can see we have a menu bar here and we have the three labels on the menu bar. So we've just had a look at the runtime for the program we've discussed in this video so far. Let's now consider the other window and here you can see we have the menu bar and there's just one label on the menu bar, colour. So follow the cursor and I'm now going to click on that. And what you can see appearing here is a sub-menu, a drop-down menu. And you can see that it has got the labels red, green and blue appearing in this, which is often said to be a cascading of a menu, where we cascade down here, as you can see, from the red through to the blue. If I come up to the red and click on it, you can see that the background colour of the window has gone to red. If I click on colour again and come down to the green, you can see it goes to green and if you come here again and click on the blue you can see that it goes to blue so we have the same functionality with both of these windows whereas here we've got a menu bar with three separate labels here we have a menu bar where we know if we click onto this as i'm going to do now we get this sub menu here which we often say is cascaded down from the label that appears in the menu bar. So to be clear, this is the menu bar and this is the sub-menu that cascades down from the label that appears in the menu bar. Let's now have a look at the code responsible for this runtime, the runtime of just this window. So this is the computer program that allows us to have the cascading menu, the sub-menu, the drop-down menu. And let's have a look at where it is familiar from the program we've already looked at in this video. Well, here you can see we're importing TKinter. Here we've got the three functions responsible for changing the background color of the window. This line creates an instance of the window. And if we were to look to the runtime, that instance would look like this. It would be the window as you would expect. This line creates an instance of the menu that's associated with this window that was created on this line and is going to be bound to this name, my underscore menu bar, and that would appear in the runtime as shown in this area here. Now let's consider this line, and you can see again it's creating a menu and the menu created is going to be bound to this name my underscore drop down underscore menu but look here and you can see what we're passing in is my underscore menu bar in other words to the menu that i'm going to create i'm not passing here the window i'm passing in the menu bar that was created on this line because if you look at this name you can see it's the same as this so what we're going to get with this line is the menu that I'm going to create being attached to the menu bar not the window let's now consider these three lines and all three are an example of a message and it is a message in each case to this instance of the menu and in all cases you can see we're going to be invoking the add command if we go to this message we can see we're adding a label which is red and we're adding this which is saying we want the command to be red color so when they click on the red label that is the user of the program this is what will execute if you look here then we're adding a green label and we're saying that the command is to execute this function and finally here you can see the label being added is blue and this is telling us to invoke this function if the user clicks on the blue label now to stress the point i wish to emphasize that these labels here the red the green and the blue are added to the menu bar not the window so what these four lines of code have done they've effectively produced this They've produced a cascading menu, a drop-down menu, that has the labels red, green and blue. And of course, when we click on the red, the green or the blue, we will execute one of these functions appropriately. Clicking on the red will obviously cause this one to execute and so on. Now having produced this, we now have to make arrangements for this to be attached to the menu bar. And that's what this line of code does. It's a message to this object here, which is my underscore menu bar, which of course is this here. So I'm going to have to attach this to this menu bar. And if you look, this is done by invoking this method here. And have a look at this method it's add underscore cascade it's not the same as this one here that was add underscore command this is add 
underscore cascade because if you remember I've been referring to this as being an example of a cascaded menu and if you look at what we're passing in here we're passing in the label color and we're passing to this named argument this named parameter my underscore drop down underscore menu which is the menu that these four lines were responsible for producing namely this so this bit of the code is responsible for placing here in the menu bar the following, the label color. And this bit of the code is saying add this cascading drop down menu, sub menu, to this label here. So if at runtime the user was to come along and click onto this label here, what you're going to see appear is the following. We get this cascading menu, this submenu, this drop down menu being attached to this label here. Of course, the description I've just followed suggests that all of this has been doing one little bit at a time. But in fact, this arrangement here doesn't occur until this line executes and this is referring to my underscore window which is this window here and it's asking it to be configured with the menu bar now this menu bar is clearly this which has had added to it this label and of course attached to this label is this cascading menu here so if we don't include this line we wouldn't have this arrangement as you can see it here so in summary this creates the window this creates the menu bar this slot creates this menu and this will add the menu created here to this label and of course this will then add the lot to the window so follow the cursor i'm going to come and i'm going to click onto this label which is the label that's on the menu bar and when I do that, you can see we have this submenu appear, and I can click on the red, I can do it again, click on the green, click on this again, click on the blue, and it goes to blue. If I come here and click on this again, you will notice here there is a dotted line. Now, what will happen if I click onto that? Well, let's see. This appears, and this is the menu being torn off the menu bar. It's now a cascading menu, a sub-menu, which is no longer hanging off the menu bar. But let's see if it still works. I can click on the red, the green, and the blue, and indeed, it still works. It still affects the background color of the window. Now, I'm going to come here and close it down, and you can see it's now disappeared. But look at this label. If I click on it again, you can see it's back here again. So I could click on the red, green and blue, which I'm not going to, but I'm going to come back up here and you can see that we have this dotted line here or line that you might decide is a dashed line. But clicking onto this will actually remove the menu, albeit temporarily, from the menu bar as you can see here. Now I'll have a look at this feature of a submenu in the next video on the series on TK Inter menus check out the supporting website for these videos in addition why not follow me on twitter as i issue a tweet every time i upload a new video